Dr. Doolittle. Once upon a time, in a town called Puddleby on the Marsh, there lived a doctor named John Doolittle. He was an amazing doctor, known well by the townspeople. However, he was also known for something else. Doctor, I've been having such terrible pains. Yes, I see. Hmm, nothing's the matter with you two. Maybe eat a little less cheese. Ahem, as I was saying, I woke up today barely breathing. Quack. Hmm, poor duck needs an antibiotic. Dr. Doolittle! Hmm? Oh, Miss Polly Piper, please do tell me about your imagi- I mean, uh, troubles. Hmm, as I was say- Ouch! Oh no, are you okay? That's it! I shall see another doctor! Good day! You see, Dr. Doolittle was extremely fond of animals. His entire house had animals of all kinds living about. Mice in the piano, goldfish in his pond, horses and goats living in rooms, and stables. His favorites were Dab Dab the duck, Gub Gub the pig, Jip the dog, Tutu the owl, and Polynesia the parrot. He could communicate with them marvelously. Lost another patient? She doesn't listen either way, Polynesia. And she sat on the porcupine. That's bad. But we do need the money to run this place. And feed ourselves, too. I've been living off corn crackers. Corn! One day, a friend of his asked him to practice treating animals. You're so good with animals. Why not try it? Dr. Doolittle did as suggested and people started bringing in their animals to him. I'm so glad there's a doctor that can understand me. The other vet kept treating me for my stomach, but it's my eyes that need treatment. It's all right now. The news about Dr. Doolittle spread like wildfire. Animals traveled across countries to see him, and they in turn told their friends. Dr. Doolittle gave you this for your cough. Oh, how <laughs> wonderful. However, at some point, a crocodile came to him for rescue. Please, don't send me back. I'll live peacefully in the fish pond. I won't eat the fish. Oh, dear. Yes, you may stay. Unfortunately, due to the crocodile's presence, <coughs> people stopped coming. Thus, Dr. Doolittle's savings started to dwindle. <sighs> Grocery bills. Electricity bills, off! The animals tried to help around the house and also to bring in money. Whoo! That's all we got today! Why don't people like carrots? They're delicious! Hmm, this winter may be a hard one. It was, however, eventful. It started with Chi Chi a monkey who Dr. Doolittle had rescued from a cruel peddler. Doctor, I've received news from Africa. All the monkeys there are turning ill, and no one knows why. Oh, no. They need help. We must go there immediately. And how do we do that, Doctor? We have no money. This silenced everyone. They began to fret terribly. I know a sailor who may give me a boat. I treated his baby once. And the kind grocer, too, may lend us some provisions. So the next day, Dr. Doolittle went around asking the sailor and grocer for their help. I've secured a boat, and here are our travel provisions. I promise to pay them back upon returning. That's great! We better leave soon! Everyone soon started hurriedly packing for the doctor's trip. He was only taking Dab Dab, Gub Gub, Jip, Tutu, and Polynesia, along with Chi Chi and the crocodile. Ah, Africa! It'll be nice to go home. I hope my family's okay. They left the keys with the horse, reached the docks, and settled themselves into the boat. Oh, I need to ask the sailor how to reach Africa. I have sorted the skies for years and know the ways quite well. I shall lead you. So they sailed across the oceans during the days watching the little sparrow fly. During the nights, she carried a little lantern with her. They sailed for weeks until finally... Land! I see land! It's turning dark. I hope we land okay. But the waves grew rough and struck the boat against the rocks. No! Quick! Chi-Chi, take the medicines onto the island safely. Come on, Gub-Gub. I'm trying. 
They all reached the shore safely. <sighs> Everyone here? We're all here! I checked! Woo! Surprise workouts are bad for my heart. I'll show you to a cave a little away. It'll be safe there. They spent the night in the cave and rested well. Chi-Chi, I saw lights far inside the forest. What were they? That's the palace of the king of Jolaginki. We mustn't let him capture us. I see. Her shitty gob gob her. The next morning, Chi Chi led the group to the monkeys. Chip, carry me. Me too. Quack. What? Ooh, don't mind me. Huh? Amateurs, we're here. Where's here? Sisters, brothers, cousins, form the bridge. The bridge! Chi Chi's call caused an uproar that a whole group of monkeys began to swing around. Who's that? It's Chi Chi! Chi Chi! They need a bridge? Hurry! Bridge! Bridge! Dr. Doolittle and his group watched with wonder as the monkeys leapt high, joining hands together to form a bridge between the two cliffs. Cross over! Don't worry! I'll help you! Won't they get hurt? Not at all! We're all really strong, and this is the only way. Ooh! Don't look down! They struggled over, but soon reached the other side safely. That was amazing! I've heard the famous Mickey Bridge, but this was the first time I've seen it. Come, we're close to my home. Now, we're her... Oh, no! Oh, dear. Everywhere they looked, there were monkeys lying down completely sick. Please help them. Polynesia, Gub Gub, all of you help me. Chi Chi, get those of your family who are well to help too. The monkeys and Dr. Doolittle worked hard. They built separate houses of grass for the sick as Dr. Doolittle vaccinated them all. Gorillas, chimpanzees, bush babies, every animal came to help when they heard Dr. Doolittle had visited their jungle. How do you feel today? They worked tirelessly for three days and nights straight. Finally, the monkeys all recovered, and Dr. Doolittle and his group slept for two whole days, completely exhausted. Meanwhile, the monkeys held a meeting. We must return this favor. Chi-Chi, you know the man well. Would our finest fruits and bugs work? Men don't eat bugs from where he comes, and fruits would perish. A prime significance to men would be money. What? Money? Chi Chi explained that men were helpless without money. Food, water, and life depended. That sounds horrible. And we monkeys don't have money. Hmm. Oh, the king is a man. Would he have money? He would, but wouldn't he arrest us all? He and his men have tried to help us recover, but since they couldn't succeed, they took their leave. If we take you all to him, you'd be safer. Hmm. All right, let's go. The king of that area was a kind man and was extremely protective of his people and creatures. <laughs> oh, wow. You're all healed. How? How has this happened? At that moment, Dr. Doolittle and his group sheepishly stepped out of the bushes. Who are you? Guards! Wait, your majesty, let me explain. The king listened to Dr. Doolittle's story of his travels and how he'd saved the monkeys. That is too impressive to believe. But the monkeys seem to really like you. And they are all healed. Please, your majesty, I'm telling the truth. Hmm, I'll see for myself. This is Mapendwa, and she's with me wherever I go. I'll ask you some questions, and if you can understand Mapendwa's answers, I'll believe you. All right. Hello, Mapendwa. Hmm. First, what's my favorite fruit? He says he likes dates, but his actual favorite is Matoki. Matoke? Hmm. All right, another one. What scares me? The downfall of his kingdom. The downfall of your kingdom? And flying roaches. And flying roaches? Ah, I am the last one. What do I love most in this world? He loves his kingdom. The plants, animals, 
and all the people in it. Dr. Doolittle relayed the answer to the king. You were telling the truth. I'm so pleased to know a good man like you has come to save the monkeys. The king welcomed Doolittle and all his animals into the palace. They were treated like royalty. The king rewarded Doolittle with much gold and a ship too to return home. When it was time for them to leave, Polynesia, Chi Chi, and the crocodile decided to stay back. This is our home! It's been years since I've seen Africa. Stop blubbering! I'm sure I'll see you one day. I miss you a lot. They said their goodbyes and let out the sails. But just a few minutes later, a new worry hit them. Ooh, but how do we find your way home? Just then, a whole flock of birds descended upon the ship. What's happening? Swallows, they're migrating back to our home. Hello, Doctor. We've waited for you. And now we shall guide you back home. And so they sailed their way across the oceans, guided by hundreds of tiny swallows, fluttering in the moonlight and glittering in the sun. It took them a long time and their provisions were almost over. Until... I see land! We're home! Home! Hoo hoo! Everyone was so ecstatic to return home. Dr. Doolittle began getting everything in order. He repaid the grocer tenfold to show his gratitude. And the sailor was given the king's ship along with extra payment. Dr. Doolittle started practicing as an animal doctor. And soon many patients came to him. The animals were so happy to have him back. A doctor who truly understood and loved them. Everything is well and good now. Indeed it is. Doctor, I've received word from Polynesia. She said she's doing fine. Yay! Dr. Doolittle was now living a good life. His gift was known among the people of the land. But only the animals, birds, and other creatures of the earth knew of how good a man he truly was. 